Hi guys, welcome to Mompreneur Space live show podcast where I interview inspiring moms from all around the world like you so that you can learn from them how they overcome their challenges and struggles from their mompreneurship journey. I'm your host, Kenneth Chu, and today's guest is none other than Sang Hee Lee, who is an international recording artist, New York-based clarinetist, public speaker, and founder of Musica Solis Record. And today we are talking about music entrepreneurship you are the company where she shared her secret on how she overcome her mompreneurship challenges and her struggles so let's welcome Sanghi hello Sanghi hi everybody good to have you hi, welcome Kenny. thank you thank you for having me Thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, for you because it's very early over at your at your end. So I uh, really thank you for waking up uh, early and get yourself ready for this podcast. And um, like I mentioned to you before, before we start, there's a tradition uh, for my show where every guest get to answer the question of the day posted by the previous guest. So uh, Sunny, are you ready um, to answer the question of the day? Sure, okay. bring it on. So let me... Get the question. So the question of the day uh, for you is, what is that one thing that drives women empowerment? Okay. So I repeat again. What is that one thing that drives women empowerment? Spend some time to think about it, and I will come back to you while I go onto Facebook Live and see if we are connected successfully. And I see that we have some guests that is coming on. And maybe we can say hi to them. Hi everyone! I saw Eddie is watching. All right. So for those who are watching it live with us, uh, do share with us in your comment and drop us a hi and let us know where you are tuning in from. It will be good for us. And if you have any question for uh, Sunny or uh, even for me, even anything about mompreneurship, uh, do post it in the comments so that we will address it uh, towards the end of the show. All right. So, so Sunny, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so share with us what is your answer to the question of the day, and the question of the day is what is that one thing that drives women empowerment? Over to you, Sunny. Well, I think uh, women are natural caregivers, and I think what empowers us is that giving. Right? If we give, we I for me, I feel empowered. I feel. That I did something uh, good for the world, so I think that's just naturally women are empowered by giving and caring for other people. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Sunny. Uh, thank you for sharing. And now we can officially kickstart with our show. All right. So today we are going to talk about. Thank you so much, Sunny. Uh, thank you for sharing. Oh, good, good. We are good. We are good online. So, um, like today we are we are going to talk about. Music entrepreneurship. You are the company, but before that, uh, Sunny, can you do a short introduction of of yourself? Uh, where are you from? Um, and what are you currently uh, working on? Uh, or what currently are you doing? Maybe you can share with us. Yes. Hi, everybody. My name is Sung Hee Lee, and I'm a clarinetist uh, based here in New York City. Um, I'm a music entrepreneur. I have a record label called Musica Solis, uh, where I help other people, help mus musicians uh, to launch their their music into the world. And this was uh, I have my five uh, solo albums uh, that I did on my own, and I've learned so much over the years. And during the pandemic, people have reached out to me and asked me, uh, you know, Hasani, how do you release your CD? How did you do this? So I decided to help other people and say, yes, I could do that for you. And that's how it all got started. Um, and that's what I do now. And in the future, I have a um, couple of recording, exciting recording projects also lined up. Um, yeah, that's what I do. Thank you so much for asking. So Sunny, um, I, uh, I know that you have two uh, grown up boys, right? You're a mom of two grown up boys. So how, how are, are they now? Your They're boys. good. Um, you know, I did, I spent my put my career on the, on hold for a bit in my, in my life and I raised my kids and, um, they're great. Uh, they're all grown up and they're in college. The one's working. Um, and I feel one of the one of the most proudest thing I've ever did in my life is to have raised 
by kids. Good, good. Thank, thanks a lot for sharing. And uh, why did I ask that? Because uh, uh, our show is Mompreneur Space. Because for you, you look really, really young. Uh, <laughs> I did not know that you have grown up kids and you really take care of yourself uh, very well, especially as a mom. Um, and, and two boys, I believe that um, working, um, being a musician and working on your business. So maybe you can uh, share more about the business. How did you uh, transit from a musician? So how was your music, uh, musician career like? And what makes, uh, wh why did you make that switch, the, 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 the switch to being an entrepreneur to start your business? Well, first of all, this this word entrepreneur, I didn't even know what it was until much later. It's a term that got thrown around. It, it you know surfaced within the past few years. But when I was starting, um, just to go back a little bit, is that when I you know everybody practice to become a musician you get to a great school and then you graduate and but by the time you graduate and you know get a master's degree and i my first job was at a uh, working in an orchestra and um around that time my parents being asian parents uh, my mom was like what are you gonna get married right and so then you're like oh yeah i should get married and so it's just no, naturally my career um trajectory kind of went on a different road where I got married. And then once you get married, you have to have kids, right? <laughs> and um, so that way my, my, but I kept practicing this whole time because I had my goals and dreams that, you know, that I've been, I've been um, living with all my life. But then being a mom, when the kids came around, it just got put on a little bit on a, um, on a back burner because when you have a kid crying, you have to give, you know, instead of picking <laughs> up a clarinet, you have to right? pick up a bottle. Yeah. And so, um, so slowly it kind of, um, my career started taking off later on, much later on. And when I had, um, it, through, through, you know, being a parent, you learn a lot. Um, and it's, you learn about a lot about letting go and having fun. And I'm going to talk about this later. Um, <laughs> but it, it keeps you young, it keeps you young. And um, so yeah, <laughs> you, 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 I know, I kinda... you sounded very optimistic uh, about it. Is it something that is in your nature? That means you are very optimistic about things? Because for whatever you share, right, is whatever that I'm not hearing from most of the mothers I connected with. They are like always very stressed. They don't feel that they are learning anything. They feel that they are mm. depleting. But from from your part, what makes you think? What what contributed to this? Is it music? Is it because of your environment? Is it your upbringing that kept you, or maybe your parents that that kept you very um, positive and very optimistic? Is there a reason for I that? Yeah, I think as uh, musicians, especially classical musicians, we're always trying to do better, better, better and look for different ways to make it sound good. So it's always I think that positive um, nature is kind of baked in us and that maybe that's why instead of looking at what's wrong, well, that's there's another part of that, which is the dark side. But <laughs> I try to <laughs> look forward. I try to look forward and say, what can I do better? OK, that happened. But what can I do better? And maybe that's you know just and it, especially being a mom, you want to set a good example to your kids. So if you're like mad and upset, that's not good for the kids. So I think maybe naturally being a musician, always looking forward, always trying to do better, maybe that kind of um, yeah. Because of the, the culture, because of what you are doing and because uh, musician, because I, I used to play in the band in, in, in my secondary school days. I played the drums. I was in percussion. I also played the timpani. And, and we, are, we need to be very disciplined in practicing, uh, hearing, a lot of things. We are, we are multitasking. We have to be aware. We be aware of our surrounding. We have to look around. We have to look at the score. We have to look at the conductor. We have to look, look at a lot of things. So I believe that that was where uh, the optimism come because everybody is at this tension. Like it's, it's a teamwork, right? And yes. you have to be optimistic because if you, if you start to get negative, Every, everybody will suffer. Everybody will really go down the drain and suffer. So, so I would say that, um, that, that, you, that it's because of the background as a musician. When motherhood comes, uh, you became more positive to that. You are more optimistic. And like what you mentioned, you want to be a role model for your children. And that's why uh, you, you do good in your professional uh, career, being a musician. And, 
And I, I remember that you mentioned that uh, because being a mom and juggling your your as uh, the your prof uh, your professional career as a musician is a bit of a struggle because you need to perform during the evenings where you need to attend to your kids. And uh, what was that that challenge challenges like? The struggles. Yeah, I mean, being a musician, it's really a, a nighttime job because the concerts are always happening at night. And so the struggle was, yeah, leaving home with the baby at home. And it's that guilt, you know, the motherly yeah. guilt that you're you're not doing your best uh, to be a mother. But then you have this job, you have this performance that you have to serve other people. And it, it's that crossroad, like, do I serve my kids or do I serve, you know, my music in the audience? Um, and uh, yeah, that was that was a little bit of a struggle during that time, but I chose motherhood, so I had to um, give up uh, performing altogether. And, and this is how I got into recording, uh, because some recording, uh, planning a recording project, I could manage the time on my own and practice uh, in between um, activities, kill, ch children's activities, and then plan my own agenda, and then set a recording date, and then go there and bang three days, and then I'm done. So, you, ha you know, as mothers, we find ways to figure things out. And I think musicians are naturally um, are good at that. Naturally, we figure things out. If we could figure out how to play the Nielsen clarinet concerto, which is really <laughs> difficult, um, just naturally that kind of spills over into our net, you know, everyday life. And uh, it's a it's a challenge. But musicians, I think, um, are very good at problem solving. Hmm. And um, and that gets us um, to co you know co coordinate. It's like chamber music is all about teamwork, right? You can't just be um, playing your part, not listening to other people. You have to listen to other people and make it work within the group, even if you don't if you, if you don't agree personality wise. <laughs> but you have to make it work. And same with the families that um, you know there's so many different opinions, even within the same family. But you have to somehow bring everybody together, communicate, and make you know make things work for for us yeah so sunny when you when you talk about like when you gather everyone to make it work yeah example in the orchestra everybody have to it's a teamwork when you work together everything get get uh get done and and two words just pop up into uh, uh, one word pop up in my head which is harmony because mm. musician is always talking about harmony you yes. need to harmonize with everyone and like and and, and you apply that into your daily lives as a mother in your motherhood because you are figuring things out and the other thing I, I, I believe that musician being a musician also help you to look at challenges differently yes it's a way to make you better and and that's where I believe that you also uh, pass down these skills to your, your, your two boys to look at challenges different because you being a role model you don't look at challenges as as something that is bad you yeah. look at something that that is something that uh, is good for you and that is also uh, that also bring me to to our topic which is music entrepreneurship so how did that that term comes about and uh, because most of us would think that music is more like a hobby uh, more traditional asian thinking would be oh um music cannot earn money like for me i was i i learned fashion design i graduated with a diploma in fashion designing and major in design my dad always tell me that drawing does not make you money like like designing does not yeah. make you money you have to be a doctor you have to be a lawyer you have to be an accountant and all that stuff but music is even even uh how should you put it not the mainstream kind of career on the mainstream kind of business so maybe you can share more like how do you come up with this music entrepreneur and also um, this you are you are the company right yeah yeah, yeah. so how do you come uh, come around uh, <laughs> founding it's, it's this a loaded yeah it's a loaded question but um, I mean you said so many things that I like to I like to uh, talk about uh, but like I think um, people choose music um, and I think a lot of I mean, everything you do, it's about happiness, right? Being happy, uh, being fulfilling, fulfilling your creativity, being, you know, complete, be feeling good about yourself. And of course, my mom wanted me to be a doctor. And I was a biology major my first year in college, but my heart said, you got, you know, I wanted to try music. And that's, that's, you know, the rest is history. But um, 
having having known that like like what you just said of course these creative music especially is you can't compare it to a salary of a you know doctors or lawyers you know but um i think the the return that you get is not can't be monetary it's not monetary it's more like you're fulfilling you know and it gives you good health you know because you are doing what you love to do and this music entrepreneurship came about when i after i've uh, released my first album um and my second album um i realized this is what I'm good at, right? I'm good at organizing. I'm good at uh, getting things done. I'm good at planning ahead. And this all is, I learned this like when I'm at school, like at um, mothers, uh, what do you call PTA, you mothers get together and one, when mothers get together, we plan a fundraising, it happens. And it's so amazing because mothers are just like, like I said, women love to give and take care of things and get things done. And I realized, wow, mothers and musicians are natural entrepreneurs. And, um, and this is where like, okay, so I did two CDs, why don't I keep going and my third one and fourth one. And so, although I'm not performing out there on stage every night, at home I'm performing for myself as I'm practicing. And I practice as I'm performing. So I keep my level up, you know? Mm. Um, and that is, it's performance practicing. And I think that is most, it's so important. If you're satisfied with your performing, then I think, because I think we are our biggest critic, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm sure we're going to talk about the, the inner voice. I love talking yeah. about the inner voices because there's so many negative thoughts that uh, we carry around, not just musicians, everybody. And that that puts us back but like you know we always say we are the we are our biggest obstacle which is so true and musicians um if we could get over that perfectionism if we could get over like i'm not good enough that kind of mental aspect the whole world opens up even in, even in business and of course like i said you can't compare that you know the monetary value uh the dollar sign to other people but there are ways to make income, a passive income as musicians. Wow, that's that's a that I, I totally love what you mentioned, especially the part where you say mothers and musicians are natural entrepreneurs. Wow, I, I really love that. And and that also that start, started me thinking that whatever musician going through and whatever a sport sports person going through are all the routines. And what makes you guys professionals because you you failed a lot in the beginning, like you because it's the learning phrase and and I always be, uh, I always remember this ten thousand hours, this ten thousand hours theory yes, to mastery, right. whatever skills that you put in you put in the ten thousand hours right you definitely will be able to master that skill and I see that musicians sports person, and even uh, even driving is is all about. It's all about mastery. Anything, even for me doing uh, this podcast, doing 80 episodes, I believe I've done 80 over hours so far. I'm That's not, incredible. So, so it's about mastering one skill where nowadays, if you look at traditional education, they don't accept failure. But if you look at all the professionals, even musicians, even singers, pop stars, they are earning so much because they have mastered one skill they have been even better than most people and thriving and striving. So what would be the, the common challenges and struggles that you see in musicians uh, being entrepreneurs? That's such a great question. Um, I do lectures on um, you are the company. And I also do uh, another topic I do is listening to your inner voice and letting go of perfectionism. But in the first um, lecture topic, you are the company, I have um, a slide that says, um, if you're, you know how there's a term, uh, jack of all trades, master yes. of none? Yes. I flip that around and I say, if you're a master of one, you're a jack of all trades. Wow. So if you could do one thing really good, uh, like music, musicians are so good at doing one thing so well, if you could apply that thinking, that discipline, that mindset to other things, my God, the whole world opens up. And I feel that um, musician. this is what I think um, 
uh, some of us are a little bit stuck that we have to like do, just keep practicing, just get that <laughs> job, just play in an orchestra, just do this. But I, 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 I challenge the people that are thinking that way. Why, you know, why not? Why not use your skills on other things? And um, you'll be so surprised how many surprise yourself, you know, at yourself what what you're capable of doing. And this is um, there was a time where I gave up music and got into golf. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. And I, I realized golf is so similar to music where the more you practice, the better you get. And I became a single handicap in less than two years, <laughs> and, you know, and in my so. Uh, that's yeah. So, was that was that 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 moment that you realized that the skills that um, you have as a musician, the qualities and the values, the attributes that you have as a musician do apply into entrepreneurship. What are the maybe the three things that you see that you uh, people can use into entrepreneurship? Like you say, one of them will be routines. Yeah, I think it's um, as as musicians, we're like I said, we spend so much time practicing in a practice room by ourselves, and therefore we don't get to communicate with a lot of people. And I think one of the things that early on we need to do as musicians is to network and communicate mm. and make connections because in the end in the real world it's all about you know if people want to hire you if they want to work with you if you're if you're a great performer but yet you can't you, you know you don't know can't how socialize. to socialize can't socialize right um at the end of the day people want to have fun while that while we're working right even in a in a group so I think the more you practice on yourself, on communicating, that's one of really big skills that you could, uh, you know, use in a in a business. Yeah, and I, I and I um, agree with you on the communication wise, because as creative people, like I, I'm a I'm a designer, fashion designer. We always I, I'm always in the sewing room. I'm always sewing and crafting and drafting and all that stuff. And like what you mentioned, um, if not for my first sales company being an advertising sales, to really, uh, like, put me in the in the environment that I can hone my communication skills how to be a salesperson connecting with people and network with people i will not be where i am today and i will not be even even connecting with you in clubhouse and that was where we we started and because of your story and the the things that you have shared i find that it's so rare it's so rare that a musician can see that and see that connection and empowering other musicians to do the same thing and that was where it it, it allows me to connect with you to, to, to really bring you onto my show and really to share with a lot of mothers that it's possible. There's nothing that's impossible. It's whether uh, you want to make it possible. So coming to that, when you talk about um, networking, so what started you networking as a musician? Because you are a, a clarinetist, uh, you spend a lot of hours. So what started you knowing that the power of networking is something that uh, a lot of musicians have struggles and challenges? Yeah, so networking is, um, I don't, I, I mean, I use the word networking, but it's really talking to people, talking to your friends. And um, musicians, we play for other people, right? Um, and so when I, you know, talk, like I said, I picked up golf and I had a lot of golf friends and they love music too. And, um, and when I, uh, networking with your audience, right? So they became my audience. My friends became my audience. Um, and so when I'm, um, you know, and when you're friends, people are interested in you. Like my friends are, what are you doing? What are you doing? And so I used to bring them to my home. Hey, I'm going to play a concert. Do you want to come to my home? And I would play for them. And um, they asked me like, how did you get, uh, how do you practice golf so well? Or how did you get good so fast? And I think it's really about, I tell them, I think, it's the t tempo and the rhythm that I carried from my music that I, you know, bring to, to golf. And it's about keeping steady. And, um, yeah, so networking is just uh, comes naturally. It's about really making friendships with other people. And when you, the, the second part that I wanted to, um, the second point that I wanted to make about how musicians could go beyond themselves is looking, uh, who are you, like, who, um, your usefulness, right? Your talent, right? And so it, it doesn't matter whether you have a talent, 
within you like what are other you have to tell other people yes. right and so um so being able to identify what you're good at and being able to communicate with people hey i'm you know i'm doing this you know i'm passionate about this so i think that you know being knowing yourself first um, and getting over all that obstacle, I'm a huge believer in personal development um, to get over yourself. Like I said, you are your biggest obstacle. And so once you know what is blocking you and once you could get put that aside, then I think so many things that you have in your mind, creative things will come come alive. Wow, I, I like that. And, and just now I realized that this is something that we have in common um, is that music is your conversational starter. Like, like people are generally most people are interested in music and what type of music and classical music always give the people that very smoothing very warm sentimental kind of feel it's always a positive it always give out a very positive vibe and and that started the conversation and because of your love for music your love for performing and even performing for your golf friends uh, this started that whole networking because you are doing something that is very real to you that you love and when you do that you shine you attract people and that became your conversational starter and also because it's something that you are passionate about that you that brings you happiness you want to share something that you love to with and uh, with others like the same thing that why uh, like I wrote the book Mother Industrialist and and it became a conversational starter because of my love and my passion to empower mothers to be entrepreneurs and with that passion is it come naturally like when we first met uh, each other on Zoom we communicated and I think we we spent quite quite some time yes. uh, really talking and really exchanging and it, it seems like things just connect so like like you mentioned um to really identify yourself have that awareness the self awareness and and who are you your identity is very important which i feel that um this is something most a lot of people will need uh because they are always following other people's footsteps they are always f doing things for other people but they forgot about themselves and this is something that i i want to put it out to to the audience and those who are, who are listening and watching they are able to bring uh take in all these uh golden nuggets and also coming to that um we have shared like what are the common challenges about musician being entrepreneurs so how about you what is your one biggest challenge as a mompreneur being a mom managing a business what is the one biggest challenge or you can you can share more if you have a lot you can share with us uh, <laughs> well um so before when my kids were younger it's that i told talked about the guilt right mm. the guilt that you're not spending um all your time raising your kids right because um you want to be a good mom and, and and i feel so responsible for my kids and my and their future however that's not really true you know <laughs> why is that uh, so <laughs> maybe you, you can enlighten a lot of mothers who have young kids yeah yeah and and i think uh, when i realized that my job is to provide for them care for them but i also have to feel you know myself i have to take care of myself and i think the challenge was for me to think about myself right and as mothers we always they were so tired you know doing this cooking and cleaning and taking kids to here and there and they're sometimes like who am i you know what do, you know what, what? you so, lost yourself um, along the way yes right? Yes, and I think the challenge for all the women out there is really finding ourselves again. Because we were children once, we went to school, we had hopes and dreams, we wanted to become somebody someday. Uh, and like I said, like life happens and, you know, all of a sudden you have kids and and of course your life has to, you, the kids are more important because they're so young, they need our help. Uh, and so that, yeah, that I thought um, when my kids were younger, just finding my own time, finding my own peace and you know, a space for myself so that I could still grow um, as a person and as an, an artist and as a musician. Uh, I think that was I had to really, you know, carve up my time so that that also grows because my kids, are, you know, kids are going to grow, grow and they're going to go off on their own. But what about the mothers when they when they're when you're empty nesters, right? Then 
like who oh what, what did i do so i i knew that was coming because i watched a lot of korean dramas <laughs> <laughs> so i kind of like okay i think if i keep up my music a little bit longer then once my kids are on their own then i could keep you know keep doing music so i think that um yeah that was um I hope well, I answered pretty, your question. Pretty interesting. I, I was just fi- I was just thinking like, what what part did uh, Korean drama inspire you, like on on onto that part? It, it's more like um, seeing what happens in other people's lives, mm. right? And what to do, what not to do. Um, of course, these are Korean dramas, but there's a little bit of truth yeah, in those stories. Uh, it's, it's how should put it. Um, the scriptwriter needs to find a reference for them to write something, right? It has to be factual to a certain degree, right? Yeah, it reflects it reflects life, you yep. know, people's lives. Um, and I think uh, one of the things that I don't like to see is when the uh, the mothers or the wives they um, they spend all their time raising their kids and their husband, you know, work and all that, and then later on they're like with the left with that feeling empty yeah and uh, i i just think that is that's on you you got you have to work <laughs> on yourself and you have to grow and you have to uh be smart about it so that you are fulfilled later on and enjoy and celebrate with your kids and your family's uh success wow and and i would say that this is a very important thing that i i i, I feel that a lot of mothers should uh should be aware of is to really look back onto yourself because ultimately because i've I've worked with a thousand over mothers mompreneurs uh, it's always a cycle when their kids are young they will take care they will have the mom skill and all that and ultimately when their kids like especially boys uh one of my mompreneurs she has two boys and when she hit her 40s and her children are already in their teenage age they say mommy we don't we don't need you (laughs) it's like can you don't care about us like we are grown ups we are boys we need to have girlfriends and we don't want to see like we are mommy's boy and all that and and she told me that she felt hurt but that was also an opportunity for her to reflect and see what she wants so so this is this this is like you like from you and this is also the reason why i do all this podcast so that people like you who have walked the path you can share your experiences and the more uh, the more people share, the more mothers that share, that walk the path, the better uh, a young mom will be able to learn from all of you. And that is also the purpose of uh, what Mompreneur Space is all about, to really uh, share and educate and really uh, hopefully we can inspire, influence and create an impact in them. So thanks for sharing uh, that That uh, biggest challenges as a mompreneur. Uh, I believe that a lot of mom, whether you have a business or not, there's always the mom's guilt there. But you have to be aware that uh, there will be a time that you will be back on to yourself. You have to invest back to yourself. And before that happened and before that, uh, that, that kind of loss or kind of uh, identity that you do not know who you are, it's best that you can address it earlier and start planning yeah. for it. And I like what you, Sunny, have mentioned about hopes and dreams. A lot of us, ever since we come out to the corporate world we start working we've forgotten all our hopes and dreams and and later after that when the corporate world does not work for you for example you start to look for your hopes and dreams and just realize that times have fly so much so one thing that if you want to find back your identity i believe that like for for what sunny had mentioned like she has her hopes and dreams she want to continue her music she do not want to lose her uh, identity as a musician but at the same time, she would want to be a mother. So she wanted to have, handle both things. And that's where she started recording. And this is something that I, wa- I, I wanted to ask you the last time. It's like, where do you get this idea of recording, being a recording artist, like a, a musician? Because normally when we talk about recording artists, is singer. But for mm. me personally, I, I seldom hear people will want to go that route of recording their instrumental play. So where yeah, do you it get just came, 
it just came naturally because you know as musicians as classical musicians we listen to so many recordings in the past of all these greatest uh you know artists and composers and you know i listened to my teachers david david schifrin's recording charlie nidick's recording all these great clarinets recording and when it came time for me in my uh late 20s i thought and i'm you know stay home mom <laughs> you know raising kids and i'm like what about my music? You know, every like every musician spends thousands of ten, well, more than 10,000 hours in the practice room. And what about my music? If I stop playing now, it's all going to disappear. It's not like, you know, piece of art you draw and you put it on a wall and it's still there or writing a book. Music, the sound, it just disappears once you yeah. let it, you know, once you play it. So I just thought of like, what if I make one of those like recordings, you know, and then <laughs> and have it uh, as my um, like almost like a retirement gift for myself before I really dive into motherhood. And so I started asking questions. I called up my teachers and I asked them, you know, you know, how can I start? My, how can how did you do that? And so just asking questions, one thing led to another. Um, and I started making recording. And then this is when I realized, oh, my God, I love this. I love being able to practice for something, make something, make it into a disc a CD. <laughs> you know, the CDs don't exist any. You know, it's kind of on its way out. But back then it was like the CD. I could at least make something and have it as a record. It has mm. a, a documentation of something that I could leave behind. Or even I, I could show my grandchildren <laughs> what I did when I was younger because back then I didn't think I would be coming back to music and all that. So that's how I got into it. And I got totally involved in it and i thought wow this is great it works it work it fits my schedule so nicely i could plan my schedule when kids are at school i practice and you know little by little i created this like a plan and um yeah like i said before i love practice i love making these projects because i get to time manage each project and actually have a date where it finishes um, so those, uh, in, yeah, that's how I got started. And that's my passion now is um, some ha leaving an evidence, right? Yep. Leaving an evidence. Playing concerts, there's nothing like live performance, yes, right? Yes, yes. But, you know, but in a live performance, there's, um, you know, once it's gone, it's gone. If it's not recorded, it's gone. So I love leaving evidence. And that's <laughs> just like a game that I play for myself. What evidence can I leave this year? Or wow, this I, I like that. I, I wish I, I had that thought back then when I was playing in the, in the band. Because um, I would say uh, we became a gold band because there's a competition. Is uh, if I'm not wrong, it's Singapore Youth Festival. So all the band in Singapore will just come together. All the secondary school band will come together and compete. So I wish that back then we had that recording, back then or the video recording that I was be yes. being the solo, playing the solo as an opening. Like, but all that was not being documented. There was no evidence that I can say, okay, I played the timpani before, I played that well, and da 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 da. Nobody believed in that. So, exactly. So, when you say that, that just, oh, just really resonated with me so much. And also for, for, for um, musicians, whoever is a perfectionist, um, even like listening to our own voice, we just don't like <laughs> listening to ourselves. And, and musicians are like, we don't like listening to ourselves. So we try not, you know, um, we we don't we don't like recordings yes. because we don't like listening to ourselves but there therefore in when i was younger my of course my parents didn't really have like a video recorder or anything like that but um so i didn't i don't really have any like younger recordings but now i'm like oh i wonder how i sounded although i'm sure if i heard it back then it would have been like oh my god i hate that recording <laughs> But it's as a, you know, once you get older, you be, you kind of get nostalgic. You kind of like, oh, wow, you know, I wonder how I was back then. And so it's really for your future self to leave like these documentation, like looking at an old photo. Yeah. Right. And so uh, musicians, um, I, you know, I hide. I mean, nowadays everybody has a phone and that's not <laughs> that's not a shortage. Everybody ha has cap capability. Uh, but let's so. I think that's kind of how I got started on this recording journey is that when I realized, oh my God, you know, I don't have any recordings from my past, maybe I could start from now. Wow, that, that is a very good, um, it's, it's, it's really golden for that part, like really documented 
down you have documented down uh, whatever that is in the past and you start really really early and and uh, that's where you are um, you believe in that and i realized that if not for your teacher who has done it you will not have a role model that you believe that you can do it because i believe if there wasn't anyone that had been there, done that, that was close to you, will be able to guide you, you will be having all these little voices um, in your mind that is telling you, I'm not good enough, I, I can't yeah. be, who am I, and all that stuff. So do you, do you have that imposter syndrome in you when you <laughs> first thought of that, or is it because of your teacher that gave you the confidence that you feel it? He can do that, he can guide me, and I can do it too. Was there any... Oh, absolutely. I mean, man, yeah, talk about imposter syndrome. I think, I mean, you're not human if you don't have that imposter syndrome in you, okay? And especially as musicians, um, we're just so critical about ourselves and we're always comparing with other people. And especially, um, you know, the greatest, uh, you know, performers out there. And I think this is the trap that we should really look into, like, do I really want to go that down that rabbit hole because you really ultimately cannot compare yourself to other people because I'm sure you've heard this. You are you. You're <laughs> unique. You have your own voice. Um, and of course, like, oh, my God, who am I to re do a recording? Who am I to do this? But I think I reached a point in my life where I just like it was the bottom. Like, if I don't do this now, I'm never going to be able to, um, you know, uh, see uh, live with myself. You will live with years, regrets, right? Yes, yes, because that there's that, um, you know, period in your life, you know, when you're young, you have your your muscles are working, you're vibrant. And, and but then once you stop practicing, it's like being an athlete, yep. you stop, you know, training, you're not going to go back to doing like, you know, triple, triple you're losing soccer. it. right? <laughs> <laughs> so there was that and I just decided this is where I said, okay, if I don't do this now, I'm never going to do it. So I just like, planned it and did it. And I that is I think that was the turning point for me. Wow, wow. I, I think this is something that uh, to really do it without, uh, so that you will not regret in the future yes. that you have not done it. And you, you saw that, that if you don't do it now, you will never do it. So you just take a leap of faith and just jump into it, right? Yeah, it has to be, I mean, you have to live every day as if it's your last day. You know, you have to perform as if it's going to be your last performance and just really give it all. And I think that's when the best um, you best productions, best performances come out when you give everything you have. Uh, there's no tomorrow. There's there's no guarantee that there's the, the next time is going to happen. Yes, yes. I, I like that part so, so much because it is in... Uh, like musicians, singers, uh, especially those top-notch uh, singers, musicians, they always perform like this is their last performance. So this is something that I, I always uh, applaud and I uh, really appreciate a lot of this top musician. So at the same time, we have a very interesting question from one of the audience. Uh, her name is Pei Yun, and I know that she uh, she's a musician too. And she asked that, do you record as, a, as an independent musician? So this is a question by Pei Yun. So, uh, Sunny, would you be able to answer that? Like, do you record as an independent musician? Um, yeah, um, I think what she's... Re mm, yeah, I record for my own label. That's why I created my own label. And nowadays, the music industry has changed so much that you don't need a, you don't need a commercial record label. I did my first two recordings with a commercial record label, and I realized... I do a better jo job of representing myself than being one of thousands of artists on their label. And so I just took the uh, power into my own hands and I uh, started, you know, producing under Musica Solis um, label I created. I love, you know, I also go by Sunny and I, I like to have it Sunny music because to have it more bright and cheerful, yeah. but it's classical music. So my husband said, uh, Sunny music would probably not go well with uh, classical music. So then my uh, why don't we go with Musica Solis? It's Latin for Sunny Music. And I said, oh, that sounds good. So uh, the point I'm trying to make here is that, um, yes, you should become independent artists, you know, and you should partner with other independent artists and become, an, you know, become a collaborative. Um, and nowadays you do not have to give away your rights to anybody. You own your own work. And this is why I feel that um, this... Uh, I'm very adamant that you are the company. You know, you are the company of your own 
own life and your own music and if you are the company imagine if you had a coffee shop your own coffee shop you wouldn't just sit by and just like hope that people would come into <laughs> your your store you would be like hi what well, would you like to come in you know i have really you know do you like iced coffee i have different kinds of coffee so you would be advertising you would be marketing right you would be talking to people this is why communication is so important because people People buy from people. You yes. heard that, right? And people would come into your store because they want to, they like you. They like the aura. They like what you represent. It's not necessarily the coffee itself, the music itself. It's what the label or the, the whole person, package, right? the whole package that represents. And for me, my purpose is to bring soothing and comforting music, uh, comfort and healing through my music to people. And so that's what I offer. And uh, yeah, independently, I think this is the way to go. Uh, unless you're one of these really, really lucky people, one out of a million where people, are, some company is going to pay you like thousands of dollars. Uh, good luck. <laughs> I am, you know, congratulations. But most people, People will probably do better if you start on your own little by little and start building now, you know, instead of waiting later. I'm like, oh, I should have done that before. Wow, I, I like that. And and something that I've realized that uh, what makes you different from the rest, I believe there are other musicians who has their own label, their own recordings. But I think what makes you different or what you have is very important in is that marketing. You have that marketer's mindset you're always promoting yourself you're always putting yourself out there you're always always communicating you're always reaching out to your target audience and this is something that i believe that the audience can take away from uh from what sunny have done and done it right uh is that she's not just independently doing her own label her own company she also markets it she always uh, putting it out to people, telling people that she has this uh, upcoming, like like unconsciously, Sunny has told me, oh, I'm going to do my recordings and all that stuff. I'm going to record a new album and all, all that. It's very natural and it, it has to be in you, right, Sunny? Yeah, so this this um, the term marketing and advertising, it could be a little bit businessy, right? But I try not to think about it that way. I just try to like having love having coffee with people. And when you're having coffee with your friends, you naturally talk about what you're up to. Like, what are you doing for the summer? What do you? And this is the part where I really want to urge um, a lot of the introverts or people that are shy and talking, start talking to your friends as if. There's no attachment. There's it's unconditional love. And when you start sharing authentically, there's nothing better than that. And that's, um, you know, in business, of course, you talk about marketing and marketing strategies and, and uh, all things like that. I don't I think that's yes, that is part of it. But more you share authentically, more you share about yourself naturally. I think there's no better way of advertising ju than just sharing yourself and sharing your story uh, authentically and yes. just being yourself. I, I like that part because it comes so naturally and it should be that natural, right? It should come natural because it's like having a coffee, having a chit chat session or even like even doing a, a talk show like that. Like before this, um, definitely people will think, oh, Kenneth, will you get nervous? Will you this and that? But if you take it as I'm chatting with a very good friend, that a friend that we are like-minded, like Sunny, we have we can talk for hours and hours. Uh, just treat it as a talk show. It's supposed to be a talk show. It's supposed to be a chit-chat. It's supposed to be a session for me to get to know her more uh, so that um, and able to bring out the greatness in her so that she can inspire or maybe influence some of the mothers out there to think like her, to see her as a role model and believe that they can do the same for themselves. So um, time flies and uh, we have almost coming to the end of the show and I have really a lot of things that I want to share with Sunny. So for those who are watching and watching the replay, you can always post your question in the comments and I believe that Sunny will be able to uh, reply you in the comments to reach out to you. So at the same time, um, Sunny, can you share with uh, the audience how they can get connected with you? 
Yeah, so um, I my social media, I have Facebook, Instagram, I go by Sunny Clarinet. Um, my music, my artist name is Sung Hee Lee, but it's so hard to spell. So I'll just remember Sunny Clarinet and it should all be there. Um, yeah, so this this just so much fun. Thank you so much, Kenneth, for doing this for other women, other mom, empowering other people. Thank you for providing this kind of amazing space so that we can share our story. Thank you, thank you. You are welcome. And and um, this is something that, like, like I mentioned to you, you were the one who really kickstart my engine to re restart and start this season five. And because of you, I've also um, started inviting a lot, and I, I start to met meet a lot of amazing mompreneurs who have amazing story like yours. And I believe that um, this is a mission. Uh, for me and to continue this to inspire more mothers uh, and tell them that you can do that because Sunny has done that a lot of moms being on my show they have done it so you can do that too so um, last but not least now it's time for you to post the question of the day to the next guest so uh, do you have any uh, question that you have offhand or you need some time to think about it uh, I have, I prepared it um, <laughs> and I think it's, um, so I wanted to ask, um, you know, people have, uh, like they look at musicians or they look at artists and they're, oh, you're so talented. You're so talented. And I feel every one of us have a talent inside us. Right. And so if you can have any talent in the world, what would it be and why? Okay. So slowly. So if you can have any talent in the world can have any talent in the world yeah what would it be and why wow nice what would it be and why right yep okay so the question of the day posted by sunny is if you can have any talent in the world what would it be and why Okay, so this this question will be posted out to the next guest and for those who are watching, for those who are listening, you can always drop your answer in the comments uh, to let us know. We, we, we will be, uh, we will love to have uh, all your answers in the comments. So last but not least, um, Sunny, what, what is the last advice for, uh, for the mothers who are on the fence thinking whether they should start a business? What would be your last advice for them? Yeah, if you have an idea, go for it. Uh, we don't need to go to business school to start a lemonade stand, okay? I mean, <laughs> so um, don't compare yourself to other people. If you have a if you have a great idea, just go for it and um, live out live out your happiness. You are you are in control of your own happiness. Thank you, thank you, Sunny. So, uh, I would like to thank Pei Yun, uh, if CJ, uh, Joy Young and Eddie for tuning in. So um, thanks a lot for um, watching or listening to Mompreneur Space live show podcast. And today I have um, Sunny uh, with us and here signing off, Kenneth here and Sunny. So I will see you guys in our, our, uh, my next episode um, next week. So thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in and wish you guys all the best and stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you very much and see you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.